So we're just up here on top of Dartmoor and we're going to shoot a time lapse sequence today. What we're going to do is we're actually going to shoot a motion control time lapse. So we're going to set up a, a rig that's going to allow us to move the camera over time and give us a really kind of dynamic looking shot. So we're going to go through the setup, through the kind of equipment we're using, the, the, the way we're setting it up, how we're choosing a, a sort of location for it and all the settings that we need in order to, to get a really effective and dynamic looking time-lapse shot. One of the first things that I'll do when I'm looking to shoot a time-lapse is work out my composition. So before I get anything out of the bag and we start setting anything up is actually take in the surroundings for sort of five or ten minutes and look at the environment and what it's doing and how that environment's changing. And with time-lapse what we look to do is capture the passage of time and typically on a scene like this we're not going to have too much movement in the actual scenery the movement is going to come from the sky and the clouds this was the the sort of initial spot that I sort of picked out and as you have a look into the background we've got a, a reservoir uh, which falls away over the, the the foreground and what I'm looking for is nice foreground elements then also a, a dynamic and an interesting background and then balance that with the sky. What I can do with the, the live view function of the camera is hold it and look on the back screen at roughly my composition and then I can move that out over roughly the distance and have a look at that and then I get a rough idea, a very rough idea of what my shot looks like. We're shooting with a wide enough angle lens that we can include some of the reservoir in the shot but we've also got nice cloud formations just over my shoulder here. So I want to use those and I want to maximise those. It's quite a windy day as you can probably tell and that means the clouds are going to be moving fast across the sky or they should be. Um, this, will, this will mean we have to take this into account when we're setting up our time lapse in terms of the interval that we use but I think this is actually a really effective shot. So I think we're going to go with this site for the setup and we'll start getting the rig and everything set up here. We're using a uh, full frame DSLR, so in this particular case we're using Can a Canon 5D Mark III and we've got a wide angle lens on the front of this, so this is a 16 to 35 f4. Um, that's going to allow us to, to get a wide field of view and capture the, uh, the sort of scene in its entirety. The, the rail we've got is it's a Canova slider and we're going to hook up our motion control rig to it in a minute. We've got a 120 centimetre track on this. So that gives us a decent amount of change in the shot and we're going to be using a single tripod and we're sort of going to go for this type of setup. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just attaching the pulley system and this is the first stage of the setup. So I'm just screwing in the connector here which connects to the sliding plate and allows the, the, that to move along on the track. So I want that belt nice and taut, so I'm just going to hold that in place and then just tighten that up and then you'll see that that belt moves along the track nicely. Uh, this is a Manfrotto tripod with a, with a geared head on top, a uh, standard sort of photography tripod. And what I've just done is attached a quick release plate to the bottom of the Canova slider which has got multiple positions along the, the length. So I just go ahead and clip that in and that's now roughly in place. So what I'm just doing now is getting my camera set on the, the quick release plate and just fine tuning my composition. That's roughly what, what I want. So what I can do now is just press record in live mode recording video and then I can just let the camera move down the track. That's looking really good and actually I think I like the pull out the best. So I think we're going to go for that. So we'll start the camera at the bottom of the track. So just going through the setup now of connecting the controller, the power pack and it's reasonably simple. Um, we have the motor here and we have a base unit here which all the connectors go into so I've just connected the motor to that. That is then connected to the power pack here and then I'm just connecting the controller which is the smart controller here and then the final connector 
that we need to connect is the uh, intervalometer or the, the cable release to the actual camera body. So we're just going to set the camera up now and I'm going to get all my settings dialed in on this. Okay, so I'm going to use the live view mode and I'm just going to punch in on my scene and then I'm just going to pull focus. So I'm going to go into 10 times and just make sure that that is absolutely sharp. And that's looking pretty good. What I'll make sure is that my lens is then set to manual focus. I don't want the camera trying to auto focus at any point. We're now just going to work through the camera settings on a typical daylight time lapse where the, the light isn't going to change so we're not looking at a sunrise or a sunset, we're sort of middle of the day. We're going to have it in manual mode and I want to set everything up and make sure the camera doesn't change any of that. So I'll firstly set my data manual and then I'll have a look at my exposure settings. I'm going to be using a base ISO of 100 and the reason for that is that we've got a bright scene, we don't need to bump it up, we want to clean as image as possible so we'll shoot that down nice and low. And then we've got a, a, a wide angle landscape scene where we want a very deep depth of field, we've got close foreground elements um, as well as a distant background so we want a deeper depth of field so I've gone for an aperture of f13. The shutter speed, now I'm metering for a normal exposure at f13, I'm metering about one two hundredth of a second. Okay, so that's roughly where I'm going to have that's where I'm going to have my exposure set. I'm just going to do a few final checks. The final other thing is white balance. As we're shooting raw, we can have pretty much any white balance that we want as long as we're not auto white balanced. Uh, and the reason for that is that that white balance could change throughout the shot if we were set to auto white balance. So we want to set that, we're gonna, we've got it set on daylight because we're shooting out in daylight conditions. Okay, so we've got everything all set up now and we're going to program the, the smart controller now with the, the appropriate settings. We're going to go into the time lapse mode and we want to go into the interval mode and once we're in there, we then can program our move. Now, once you use the system a few times, it, it becomes pretty much second nature, but there's a few sort of abbreviations. LF and RG is just the way that the, the camera is moving, so either left or right. And in this case, we want it to move right up the track, so we've got it set to that. The next setting here is how many frame or how much the camera is going to move per frame. And that brings us on to the next one is how many frames we're going to shoot. So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll dial that down to three and then we'll come down to our frames and we'll set this up to 330. So it's going to give me 330 exposures. I know that when I'm going to compile the time lapse we're going to be doing that at 24 frames a second. So 240 frames will give me a 10 second clip anything over that is, is, is enough. So we've given ourselves a, a buffer over that 10 second clip. We're shooting 330. We're probably actually going to end up using 240. So we've got a little bit of buffer either end. The time then is the interval for the move. So if we come down to that, we can then set that in second increments because we've got quite fast moving clouds today, I'm looking probably between a two or three second interval. And I'm probably gonna go three seconds um, and just having a look at the conditions, either two or three seconds um, because the, the clouds are gonna move very rapidly. So we want them to, to sharpen the time lapse. So between two or three seconds, it wouldn't matter too much if we go two or, or three. And then once we're all ready to go, we're literally going to come down, press start and the time lapse controller will take over. So we've just started the time lapse off now and you can see that the, the, the camera is taking exposure and then moving and I've gone for a two second interval and it's moving three millimetres at a time. The, the readout on the display now gives us what tells us what's going on. So this is the status and you'll see that it moves quite quickly from shot, move, shot, so it's doing that, taking the picture, moving, taking the picture. And there's a small delay, you'll see it flash up weight. That's just that pause. So it's, it's fully stopped before it takes the frame. 
The CF is the total number of frames that we've taken so far. So we've already shot 23, coming on to 24 frames. And the total frames is how many we set. So we've put in 330. Um, so we know that we've now got 304 left to go. The CT is the time that it's been running. So it tells you in that update after every shot that it's been running for one minute and 24 seconds. So now that we're back from the shoot, it's just a matter of offloading all of the footage onto computer then organizing it and having a look. So we'll go into our Canon stills folder and we'll punch up the sequence that we shot. And here are all the files in Adobe Bridge. And Adobe Bridge is really useful for looking at the time lapse because what I can do is I can come in here, hit the space bar to get a full screen preview. And then I can just hold down the arrow key and I can get a very quick look at what the time lapse looks like. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it's looking good. I've got a nice smooth movement in the actual camera movement and I've got a nice um, sky there with the clouds moving across it. Nice even exposure with no real flicker. So once I've done a quick look in Adobe Bridge, now it's gonna be a matter of moving into the post-production workflow and I'm typically gonna use programs like Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop and After Effects. I'm not gonna go into all of it now because it's a whole separate topic on its own. But what I look to do is to, to grade and work with that time lapse to give it the, the look that I want. Hopefully this has been uh, a useful video on an introduction to motion control time lapse and thanks very much for watching. What we're just gonna do is finish up now having a look at the final video.